Hi everyone, this is Ryan Reagan, the founding partner of HGXL. So today I want to share with you some tips about the new IB Economics Syllabus. Because as you know, the IB Economics Syllabus is going to change in the year 2020. So they have new assessments and they have new content in the syllabus. So in this video, I want to share with you what are the new assessments. And I'll share with you some really concrete tips on how you can ace this IB Economics Syllabus, right? Um, so if you're starting the IB this year and you chose Economics, this video will give you a head start the syllabus very quickly okay so there are four units in the syllabus the first one is called introduction to economics so you learn some really basic things here uh, but then this this the unit one is normally not going to show up much on the exam like very rarely okay then you have microeconomics so if you haven't took economics microeconomics is about how markets work right so for example we're talking about the market for a specific good or service so for example the market for apples the market for phones so this how does the market for phone work how can the government intervene in the market for phones uh, for the benefit of society? These, these sorts of things, right? And then macro, and then next chapter is macroeconomics, which is about the entire economy. So now we're not talking about a specific market. We're talking about the entire economy. So for example, how much is the Hong Kong economy growing? How much? Are, how is the inflation in Hong Kong? What is the unemployment in Hong Kong? These sorts of issues. And then unit four is uh, global. The global economy okay so you learn here basically two subtopics so first is about trade international trade okay so for example you hear about the US and China trade war nowadays so how does that work how what are the impacts of a trade war right and then also exchange rates right so you know uh, when exchange rate change there are a lot of implications right so and the next part is about development so this this is basically about like so you have these countries that are developing countries, maybe like African countries, right? So how can African countries grow their economy? Okay, so this is essentially uh, what development is about. So, you know, the, uh, what is the difference between the old syllabus and the new syllabus? So I think there are two main things that I noticed, uh, which is the first one is that there is more emphasis on real world application. Right. So, for example, now in the exam paper, there you face more data analysis and uh, data response questions. So, you need to. Uh, there's more. There are more questions that will require you to use uh, information from the real world to answer your questions. Right. So you get more case studies, in other words. Right. And even in essay questions, you need to have real world examples. Okay, so this is this is stated very clearly in the new IB economics syllabus. So there's more emphasis on real world application and real world examples. And the exam is more unpredictable because in the old exam, uh, in the old syllabus, in paper one, it's only about micro and macro. Paper two is about international trade and development. And then paper three is calculation. So what that means is that you, you won't really face micro and macro questions in the second paper. Right, uh, and you won't face development and trade questions in the first paper. So, in a sense, the old syllabus is more predictable. But now, uh, the exam have changed, and they have made it more unpredictable. So let's look at what the exam is. Right. So the first paper is uh, is, is called paper one. So basically, it's a seventy five minutes paper. They, you'll get three questions, and you you need to answer. Pick one question to answer. Okay. So. Uh, the question is norm normally includes part A and part B. Part A is a 10 mark question, part B is a, tw a 50 mark question. So part A is normally asking you to explain a certain economic concept and part B is asking you to evaluate a certain economic theory or evaluate certain policies, right? Um, so yeah, even, so this paper one is not about data response. It's just like an open-ended essay question you need to answer, but you still still need real world examples, right? So for SL, that's 30% of your marks. For HL students, it's 20%. Then you have paper two. Okay, so for paper two is data response and quantitative response paper. So you'll get like newspaper articles and data. Like it could be about a country, it can be about a market. So basically it's real world case study. You need to, so they will give you questions uh, related to the case. So for example, there will be definition question, there will be questions where you need to explain economic concepts and draw diagrams, and then there are questions where you need to evaluate certain economic policies or uh, certain cases, right? So this is 95 mark, uh, 95 minutes, 40% uh, for SL, 30% for HL. Then you have paper three, it's called the policy response paper. So it's, it's another data response uh, or yeah, another data response paper that, that where you need to do math questions. So they have they will give you 
quantitative questions as well as uh, as well as uh, evaluation questions and explanation questions right and then finally you will have your IA okay so what are you required to do in your IA you need to pick your own uh, newspaper article and then you need to write a commentary on it it's 80 uh, it needs to be under 800 words right so these are the main assessments so uh, as you can see the it is quite unpredictable you don't know what type what topics are going to show up in each paper because in the past as I said in paper one you only get micro and macro but now it can be on any topic right so it's more so it's, ba it's basically more unpredictable which makes it more you need to prepare more basically right um, yeah so let's look at I'll get, give you some tips quickly here it because uh, this is a video that where I can only speak for a limited time like right like if I go on to teach the syllabus we can take like a hundred hours but we have only limited time here so I'll give you some very general tips on how you can do better on IB economics right so the first one is you need to want for the IA right so the IA is going to be 20% of your marks for HL and 30% for SL so it's an important bit but luckily for IA we have made the YouTube videos for free uh, I'll link it in the description where you can learn how to write a level 7 IA right a lot of students have used those videos to get a level 7 on their IA and even in the new syllabus the IA requirements haven't changed much they haven't changed actually so that's why you can still use our videos to get a level 7 and uh, but of course for your IA you need to pick a newspaper article so everyone's article could be slightly different so that's why if you want to get personal help on your IA uh, later on you can register for, for a lesson with us our experts will help you specifically on your article but the second point is that you need to learn proper essay writing skills right like for example how, how should you approach an evaluation question what is your essay structure right what are the key components in your answer if it's like a 10 mark question what are your what is your essay structure right so learning how to plan your essay is very important and our team we have we have helped thousands of IB students for IB economics so we know the proper essay structure that the IB looks for and we can help you with that right so if you're struggling in IB economics you can register for a trial with us or if you want to get a head start this summer you can register for a trial with us as well and the next is you need to learn reward examples for each chapter and this is very more important than before so this is why in our notes now we have included reward examples for each chapter because we want to make sure that students can uh, can do very well in this aspect right so this is another way that our lessons uh, can help you okay so these are the main tips I have and uh, of course for different s different question types we have specific tips on how you can answer it but you can learn these in our lesson okay so if you find this video useful I hope you give us a like and um, hope that this video will help you to understand more about the IB syllabus.